KWTX News 10. Back to you. The candidates are adjusting their campaign strategies to reach voters. Recent report from the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, a business from Southern Arizona, is one of them. Spartan Shield aimed to train with regional partners here in the Middle East. Like Fortnite, League of Legends, and Call of Duty. I've got one right here, Cap tells me. It attaches directly to the helmet using some clips and some Velcro. They'll be competing with the sounds of the Blue Angels and the A-10 Thunderbolts too. In Waco, Jillian Angeline, Channel 6 News, back to you, Leslie. So I'm gonna step out of the shot, take a look at what you have behind me, this pile of debris. I strapped up into combat gear with the spouses and climbed into a Humvee. A machine first spun the vehicle just 45 degrees, but eventually rotated 360 degrees. The fact that he's doing this though is unprecedented. Would you continue to meet and uh, support those summits if you Elected. Well, look at the way the president's been handling this. Speaking of your family, you have Holocaust survivors <clears throat> on one side of your family, your May Mayflower descendants on another side of your family, and your grandfather served in the Roosevelt administration. So how does this impact your outlook on life? Uh, it, um, it impacts everything I think about. It is really smart. It is really safe. Steve White, CEO of Harvest Health and Recreation, has 36 dispensaries in the U.S., 15 of those in Arizona. He's a strong supporter of Prop 207, legalizing recreational marijuana. If passed, Prop 207 would charge a 16% tax on marijuana sales to fund things like highway projects, police and fire departments, and community colleges. White says it would mean more customers for dispensaries like his. But there's an underlying financial issue in the industry. Marijuana businesses cannot get full access to banking services. Most banks don't consider them legitimate because marijuana is not federally legal. We can't walk into a bank today and, and go get loans. Tyler Berline with Hyper, a financial technology company, helps highly regulated industries like the marijuana industry conduct legal transactions with some banks. He says the industry needs more financial support to operate like any other business. They need access to, to traditional lending. They're getting hit from every side. Um, and the industry certainly would benefit from some reprieve. Berline is hoping Congress passes the Safe Banking Act, legislation first introduced back in 2017, which would make sure federal regulators cannot penalize or prohibit banks from working with the industry. He says it's time for the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network to update their 2014 regulatory guidelines for banks serving marijuana businesses. Lisa James, the spokesperson for the No on 207 campaign, believes the proposed law would do more harm than good. She says the Smart and Safe Arizona Act is neither smart nor safe. Our brains are still developing and marijuana has a dramatic effect on brain development. There are three other states voting to legalize recreational marijuana in November. Montana, New Jersey and South Dakota. Eleven states already legalized recreational marijuana. In Washington, Jillian Angeline, KOLD News 13. Two former combat fighter pilots battling to represent Arizona in the Senate. But with 180,000 coronavirus cases in the state, the candidates are adjusting their campaign strategies to reach voters. We don't want to be uh, involved in spreading this virus. Before COVID-19, candidate Mark Kelly traveled all over the state. But when the pandemic hit, he took his campaign completely virtual. Kelly's team says he has participated in at least 40 virtual events, Zoom calls, roundtables, and phone banks. Recent polls have him leading the November race, some only by a small margin. He tells me he's not worried about the numbers. I think it would be, at this point, be an irresponsible thing to do, to go out there in public. Critics of Kelly's opponent, Senator Martha McSally, have raised concerns because while the senator has hosted more than 30 virtual events, she's still holding in-person gatherings. McSally declined our request for an interview to explain her strategy, but President Trump campaign's Rick Gorka tells me McSally's approach will lead her to victory. Mark Kelly is really following the Joe Biden model of trying to hide in the basement. Martha McSally is holding events and being accountable and accessible and safe to her constituents. Digital consultant Colin Delaney says virtual campaigning may be here to stay at least until the pandemic is behind us because people are craving social interaction. People who might not have done a FaceTime call with a volunteer 
or had a text exchange with a staff member, they might be much more open to doing that now. There are 90 days left until the November 3rd election. In Washington, Jillian Angeline, KOLD News 13. I will be with you again. I will teach you to ride your first bike, build your first sandbox, watch you play sports, and see you have kids also. Words written by Staff Sergeant Chris Hake to his one-year-old son, Gage. But Hake would never be able to do any of those things with his son. Hake was killed in an EFP blast in Baghdad on March 23, 2008, leaving behind his wife, Kelly, and Gage. Casualty assistance officers brought that horrible news to Kelly's door. The door the first time, I mean, I kind of knew that they were there, but I wasn't really, like, thinking. I was still halfway asleep, so I... Um, I shut the door and said no. And then they knocked again and I was like, nope, not, not today. <laughs> but um, it, that was tough. Once I, once I opened the door the second time is it, when it all really hit me. Hake is one of more than 500 U.S. military members killed in Iraq and Afghanistan in deaths that have been directly linked to Iran. Now more than 200 injured veterans and Gold Star family members are suing Iran in a groundbreaking case. The New Jersey-based OSIN law firm and Tab Turner, an Arkansas-based attorney, were in federal court in Washington, D.C. this week, arguing that Iran funded the building of the explosively formed penetrators and trained and supplied the terror cells who delivered the attacks. OSIN did so by calling up a variety of veterans, a widow, and expert witnesses like EOD expert Wade Barker. EFP is an explosively formed penetrator or projectile. It's a particular type of IED designed specifically to punch through armor. So in EFP, uh, the copper is formed into a slug at, uh, on detonation travels at about 26,000 feet per second. On impact, depending on the distance, somewhere around 10 to 15,000 feet per second is how is the speed is traveling. Army veteran Christopher Levi, a former specialist, still bears the evidence of the EFP's power and intense heat. You see a hole here? Yeah. This is an exit wound, and this is the entrance room. And I had a hand mic, like an um, old home um, handphone receiver, and was communicating with the driver and the gunner and surveying the area and uh, keeping contact with the other trucks. When the EFP came through, it came right across my lap and took my legs. But a piece of shrapnel heading for my throat, because I had my hand here, entered here, bounced off my ulnar, bounced off my radius, my ulnar, my wrist bones, took my second carp metacarpal and just missed my face. EOD expert Barker told the court Iran built those bombs. Copper tip DFPs are extremely difficult to build and manufacture, require expensive complex machinery, computer engineering and software. But let's take a step back to learn about how Iran and the terrorist proxies are connected. Dr. Matthew Levitt, expert witness, is the director of the counterterrorism intelligence program at the Washington Institute for Near East Policy. So Iran has the uh, Revolutionary Guard Corps, and under that it has its Quds Force. And as part of the Quds Force, you have the Ramazan Corps. And the Ramazan Corps is working closely with and training and dispatching and smuggling and supporting the Badr organization and Jaysh al-Mahdi and Qatayb Hezbollah and Asaib al-Haq and a whole host of others. Levitt said Iran had supporters on all aspects of the political spectrum in Iraq. So whatever the outcome, they would be able to influence the country. So the lawyers used experts like Levitt to prove Iran was using their political standing and tens of millions of dollars to support the killing and maiming of American service members. And so the Lebanese Hezbollah was directly involved at the behest of the IRGC Quds Force to develop terrorist groups within Iraq to kill coalition forces. To kill soldiers like Trisha English's husband, Sean, on December 3rd, 2006, the father of three boys. He was a uh, military or an army deep sea diver, and then, um, but his deployment to Iraq was, he was an advisor on a military transition team. To illustrate the destructive power of the Iranian-made EFPs, the OSIN firm brought in a life-sized Humvee. It was the first time English ever saw one, the same kind of vehicle her husband was killed in overseas. When they called and told me what date the trial was for this, they told me, this was back in July, and they told me what dates would, the trial would be held. And when I asked what date, they told me December began on December 3rd. 
and so I didn't think I had much of a choice um, because today is the 12th anniversary of um, the day my husband was killed. I see this as having a huge impact on our relationship with Iran who supplied these devices. They were too chicken to fight us force on force, so they lied to our face and shot us in the back of the head. Iran's actions, witnesses argued, left scores of veterans like David Haynes to deal with a lifetime of injuries and complications. He said he'd never seen anybody with so many holes in them and that I looked like Swiss cheese. There is going to be a great satisfaction in seeing some truth come out about some of the people that were actors in this war. The federal judge is expected to issue an opinion about the trial in the coming months. If she finds Iran liable, then the process will begin to determine if the plaintiffs will be able to receive some money damages from the U.S. Victims of State-Sponsored Terrorism Fund. But for now, for Gold Star families like Kelly Haig, her husband lives on in her son Gage, who is the mirror image of his father. Yes, so Chris was a class clown. I mean, anybody that you ask, he was doing something to make someone laugh at all times. So um, I've realized that with Gage, he does the same thing. Like he wants to make everyone smile and everyone laugh all the time. He's just like his dad.